working with farmers to help them reduce the use of pesticides. So my thinking was already along that line, and then it wasn't hard to transfer that thinking to organic, which means no chemicals and no chemical fertilizer. So I started just doing that on my own at home. And uh, at the same time, no-till was just getting started in agriculture, which meant that you didn't till your field. You just planted it year after year without tillage. And the reason it was coming along was because of chemical weed control. Uh, tillage was, was developed originally to control weeds. And um, now that they had chemicals, they didn't have to, to, to till to control weeds, so it was getting started. And they thought that it, uh, the main reason for doing it then was to save money. You'd, fewer trips over the field, less fuel, less wear and tear on your tractor, less manpower. And, uh, but it turned out that they learned there were a lot of other advantages. The, the tilt of the soil improved. Uh, the soil became more productive, crops got better yields, <clears throat> water and air could infiltrate the soil better. Your living organisms in the soil begin to be more abundant and recycling the nutrients from the top down. All those things they were beginning to learn when I was working in IPM. And so I started thinking that way about my garden. You know, why am I tilling this garden up all the time if that works? And uh, <clears throat> it took me a few years to really get my uh, concept down and in the end what I learned to do let's see eventually what I learned to do was was to you know instead of spending five years getting that soil right because you, right. well, you want to build your soil up and uh, what I did is I went and got a truckload of, of leaves and put it in the garden I had about a 25 by 40 foot garden well that didn't look like enough so I went and got another truckload you know where the city stores them when they, when they pick them up. And then I uh, went and got a truckload of chicken litter because I knew it was high in nitrogen. And I, and I had learned by then that nitrogen is the fuel that drives the system. It's what breaks their, all the organic matter down and it's what really feeds all these living organisms in the soil. It's, it's, it's the driving fuel. So, and I just tilled all that in real deep. And you heard me say, I didn't just go out and till. It took a while to get, to get that ground where I could do it. And, um, tilled it in as deep as I could, added about 150 pounds of lime. I calculated what I needed for lime. And um, then bedded it up into, into row, uh, row beds and put mulch on top. And I, I uh, bagged my grass clippings when I mowed, so I was putting that out there, putting leaves out there. <clears throat> and then when I got ready to plant, I just parted the leaves and the mulch a little bit enough to put my seed right in the top of the row bed. And I, I first did all this in the fall, so it was the spring, you know, by the time I put the seed in. So things were kind of settled and breaking and, I mean, breaking down. <clears throat> and I just parted it, planted the seed, and as soon as the plants were tall enough, just went and pushed the mulch back up around them. And just kept adding my grass clippings. Kept adding grass clippings. <clears throat> well, the way I would do it is I would get it tilled in good and deep. I'd get all this stuff in the soil, okay. tilled as deep as I could to get you the, that kick start. Uh, otherwise, it's going to take some time for nature to move it all down and accomplish what you can accomplish in that in that one startup process. But once you get all that in there, get all that organic matter into the soil and bed it up and mulch it good, then you don't ever want to till again. Yeah, you'll really like the results, I think, when you do that. So you till the first time to get it started. To get it started you quick. It in there and you yeah. In, and then after that, you don't till anymore. That's you? right. Uh, we kind of turn it back over to nature. Mm -hmm. You know, we go in and do our thing because we don't want to wait for her. Mm -hmm. You know, she's going to take a while. So we kind of go in there and I call it jump starting. You know, we get it all in there. Mm -hmm. Well, we took it all out. You know, it was there one time. <laughs> so we put it back and, and then just keep adding mulch and then whatever you need for nitrogen because you will need nitrogen every year. You probably won't need near as much as you would have if you were tilling, but... You'll have to add some nitrogen. If, even in that first summer, I didn't have many weeds because of the thickness of the mulch that I had put on the top. And, um, of course, the garden was real good, and I thought the food tasted better. Uh, somewhere about three or four months into the season, I think, I went out with my yardstick, and you know how flimsy a yardstick is. You couldn't go out here or even maybe in your garden at home and stick it in the ground. It would break. I could stick the yardstick. I'm not sure now. I have a slide, but we can't show them on that bright screen there. It's about eight or nine inches in the ground. I just shoved it down. And you could do that anywhere in the garden. 
the advantage of not tilling is that you don't upset, I'm going to say culture, but it's not the word I want, this culture of living life in the soil. When we till it, we destroy that about 90% because there's a structure to it. That this, this, the community was the simple word I couldn't think of. This is a community that is interdependent. All those species are interdependent on the other species and the system is working there. When we till it, we destroy the structure that they're living in. And we don't totally destroy them, but we knock out 90% of them. Then they have to build themselves back. And uh, if we don't till, they stay there and continue to work. And as you know, in nature, everything works from the top down. Leaves fall on the ground, they get worked into the ground. Uh, plants die in the fall, they get worked into the ground. Nature does it from the top down. And uh, that, that uh, living community, uh, uh, you can divide it into sort of three strata just for identifying. There's kind of the upper, upper top dwellers, there's the middle dwellers, and the, and the bottom dwellers. And the top dweller's job is to kind of pull that stuff into the soil, and they do a little processing and move it on down. And the next guys, they take over, and they do some more moving on down. And all this is then just sort of cycling around in that area of soil that the plant roots want to grow in. And the soil is a lot more open and porous. Water will run through it better, uh, you know, get down in deep. And uh, air gets into it better. Plant roots grow in it better. That's the way it's meant to be. And um, if you don't till, that's what you can, and, and make sure you've got plenty of food in there. And that's why you want to put the leaves in the, and the, and the chicken manure or horse manure or cow manure. Uh, but chicken manure has the uh, wood chips and it's got a high nitrogen and that nitrogen breaks those wood chips down. It gives you a lot of organic matter. And the leaves, uh, tree roots go deep in the soil and pull up a lot of minerals. So the leaves have got those minerals in them. So you, you get that in there too. So that gets your soil built up and then not tilling. Tilling uh, the thing about tilling is that uh, when you stir it all up, uh, you oxygenate it so much that you burn up your organic matter. And that's why organic matter doesn't build up also, not just because we keep disturbing that community that's working there, but we're burning it up by exposing it to so much nitrogen. <clears throat> so not tilling, you, you know, your organic matter will stay there and you keep adding it with your mulch. And the system then is still, you know, is working from the top down. You will need additional nitrogen uh, year after year because it's, it's not coming from anywhere. And the best way I've found to do that is uh, you can, if you don't mind adding manure, then just add it to the top. Um, but if you do mind it, some people don't want the smell in their backyard, you know, and the flies. Uh, you can get composted chicken manure commercially and uh, use that. And it'll work itself into the soil. You just put it right on top and let it, you know, rain will push it down. And, and nitrogen is very water soluble, so it'll move into the soil. And, and when you plant, just part the mulch enough to put the seed in the ground. If you have really tiny seed, you can buy perlite, you know, and put it in the furrow and then drop the seed in there. And, and it makes it easier for that little tender plant to come out of a small seed and get going. And then as soon as the plants are big enough, pull the mulch back up around and just keep adding mulch. Leaves and, and grass clippings are the easy thing. Well, you're going to get some weed seeds blowing in, but the thing about it being mulching, 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 you're not going to have near as many. But it will it'll reduce your weeds by at least 90% or 90-something percent. And you can walk out there like I used to, when I get home from work every day, you know, I didn't want to go sit in the house, so I'd go outside and pull a weed here and a weed there. Weed there, you know, tomorrow might be a weed here and a weed there. And it makes it so much easier. You're not down there on your hands and knees trying to pull up all those weeds, you know.